Hello guys, today I'm going to build a servo tester. I'm beginning to find that uh, building up the circuit every time I need to test something is getting pretty annoying. And I generally only have a circuit made for one servo or it gets tricky after a while. So what I'm going to do is build a big servo tester inside this enclosure here. It's going to be able to control 8 servos at once. It will be based on an Arduino Pro Mini. I'm going to have two inputs. I'll have a normal DC jack, that'll be for the power for the Arduino, and I'll have the banana jacks so that I can adjust the voltage that goes to the, the servos. So the banana jacks are going to be for the servo voltage, and the DC jack is just going to power the Arduino. I'm going to have two LEDs, one to indicate that the uh, servos are getting their power and want to indicate that the Arduino is getting its power and I'm also going to add a few capacitors to make sure that um, when all the servos are working together that the, there's not too many surges of power because when, when a servo jumps to a position it it uh, causes a big spike in current which causes a drop in voltage and if the drop in voltage is enough the microcontroller resets I'm going to keep the voltage for the Arduino, the voltage for the servo separate so that any spike in current on the servos won't cause the microcontroller to reset. It might, might cause the other servos to reset but hopefully the capacitors will solve that problem. I'm going to use encoders to change the angle of my servos. An easier way to do this would be to use potentiometers but I happen to have a lot of these encoders so I'm going to go with the encoder. Uh, I bought them and I never used them, so this is going to be where I use them. Now, they're not too difficult to, to figure out. You have five pins. These two pins over here are to do the switch, because you can push it in in the middle. That activates the switch. And then you have three pins here, which determine the uh, direction that you've turned the potentiometer. So to use this, you put ground in the center pin, and you put pull-up resistors on the outside pins, so that when uh, when you look at the signals without turning the encoder the signal will be pulled high so it will be 5 volts or whatever voltage you are using then when you turn the encoder you will see a pulse on each of these pins now the reason you have two pins is so that you can determine the direction so when you turn it one direction this pin will go low before this pin when you turn it the other direction this pin will go low before this one. So I'll show you that on the oscilloscope now. Okay, so I have my circuit here. I'm using a 3.7 volt battery. I have two pull-up resistors and the encoder. So if we take a look at the oscilloscope here, when I turn the encoder clockwise, we can see that the yellow, the yellow signal dropped before the blue signal. So what you do is there, you detect this signal here, and then, so you detect a drop on the yellow signal, and then you check what the signal is on the blue one. So in this case, it's high. So we had yellow dropped, and blue stayed high. So that means it went clockwise. So if we do the same thing again, going counterclockwise, now this time the blue signal dropped, before the yellow signal which means that it's counterclockwise so you just have to detect which signal drops first and then you know which direction the encoder has been turned in one thing to remember is your Arduino already has internal pull-up resistors in it so you just have to set internal pull-ups on in the code to uh, enable them and that will save you on a few components I'm going to start with the back of the enclosure here I need to mount the banana jacks, the DC jack, and also make up the header that's going to connect to the uh, to the servos. So that has to come out through the back as well. And I have to leave space so that I can connect the wires that are going to connect to the Arduino. I need to put the mounting holes for the headers on the back of the enclosure here. So what I'm going to do to mark it out is I'm going to just push the header through the puff board here, it's not soldered down I'm going to fix it in place with uh, some of this female header 
no, fix all them up nice and tight to the to the puff board or the circuit board. So now that's nice and fixed in place. So now that I have that, I can just place the header inside the hole here, line it up, drill my two mounting holes, and then I'll have the holes drilled through the the PCB and through the aluminium case. That way my mounting holes will line up perfectly when I solder the header to the front side of the PCB because this side is the front side of the PCB so we've drilled the hole straight down through here. Now if we take this off, solder the header on this side where it's supposed to be, put it around, the mounting holes line up in the right place. Here's the headers all made up. I also added a couple of capacitors to uh, act as smoothing capacitors for the high current or for when the servo needs high current. That's that's all they'll act as. So this can go in here now. So that would be mounted in there like that. And leaves our headers out here so we can connect our servos in there. It's beside the plus and minus or positive and negative for the servo so I just have to wire them up to there and that should be it. I've decided to use an Arduino Mega instead so I'm just going to mount the Arduino Mega in the middle of the board here somewhere and that way it uh, can I can wire it to the servos fairly easily and wire it to the, uh, the encoders on the front fairly easily. I decided to use the Arduino Mega because the encoders are going to need so many input pins that the uh, Pro Minis are just a little bit too small. So this uh, Mega should, or this Arduino Mega should have no problem uh, providing enough pins to control this servo tester. Okay, so I've most of the servo tester together. I have my uh, signal wires here going to the Arduino. Uh, we have our power supply with a capacitor, our five volts signal from our jacks here, our uh, banana jacks that comes through to the switch at the front here and when I flick that this light lights up, this is the 5 volts, tells us that the 5 volts from the banana jacks is working then I also have a DC jack here so that's 13 volts coming in on that one and that goes to the switch here which then goes to the Arduino and you can see the light on on the Arduino and also this light here indicates that the Arduino is getting power. So all the power power supply is working and the the uh, signal wires are all hooked up. So the only thing left to do is to wire up the encoders and uh, mount them on the front of the on the front of the case here. Here is the encoders mounted on the front, a little bit of wood in the back just to add a piece of support. And now I just need to wire all the different connections together and plug them into the connections on the Arduino. Here's all the encoders wired up. So all these wires up here are for the encoder position. And these wires down here are for the push buttons. So what I think I'm going to do is have the servo tester start up with everything in 90 degrees. And then you can turn an encoder to change the position of the servos. And if you want to go to 90 really quickly, just push the button in and then the servo will jump to 90. Uh, an advantage of the encoders over the potentiometers is that every time you start this up, the potential or the servo signal is always going to be for 90 degrees. So if you started this up with the potentiometers, say all positions, there's random positions, each servo would start up at some strange position. Generally you want the your servo when you're setting up something to be at 90 degrees for starters so that you can fine tune the position or the placement of the servo in the tractor or whatever it is you're working on. So I'm going to have this start up at 90 degrees when you power up the Arduino. Well, here's the finished device. I have uh, my DC jack connected here, I have 5 volts and I have a servo here to test it. So if we flick the switch, both our LEDs are lit, so we have power and we are connected to this encoder here. So 
I can adjust the position of the servo increment it by one uh, degrees each uh, each step of the encoder so that's very useful for when you're installing a servo in a tractor for example if you wanted to set the steering up you could use this and you'd know where 90 degrees was because you click the push the switch in and it goes to 90 degrees and then you can just test your limits with the encoder there nice and slowly instead of having this jump a huge distance and maybe damaging the servo or damaging the linkage that you're making you can set it up that easily so that's all there is to making a, a little servo tester that should make some of my builds a little bit easier to do especially trying to set up the linkage servos that's a bit tricky to do uh, without some way of testing the servo quickly so this should be perfect for that if you like that video make sure and hit the like button and if you have any questions post them below or in the forum and I'll try and answer them there should be a blog post associated with this video so if you're looking for the code for this setup you can just uh, shoot over to the blog post and the code will all be available there and uh, that's everything so thanks very much for watching